So, students, today we will talk about epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue is one of the kinds of all tissues. And uh, you have studied at school that there are four types of tissues. Connective tissue, epithelial tissue, muscle and nerves. Uh, all those tissues, uh, there are big groups which include different tissues. And we usually use another classification which has more types of tissues. We usually uh, divide tissues into the borderline tissues with the epithelial tissue which separate inner and outer environments or two inner environments and inner tissues. Inner tissues, they include tissues of inner environment in the widest meaning it's the connective tissues. Uh, they include blood and lymph, connective tissue proper and skeletal tissues, bony and cartilaginous tissue. And also inner tissues, they include specialized tissues, muscle and nervous tissue. Today we will talk about borderline tissues. They are located between inner and outer environment or between two inner environments, such as between blood and tissues in other tissues. So uh, epithelial tissues uh, are located uh, in the body coverings, body linings, also glandular tissues, and uh, their main functions are protection, absorption, filtration, and secretion. And let's talk with more details. So functions, protection. Epithelial tissues are borders uh, between two environments and they protect our organism from uh, influence of outer environment. Communication. All epithelia provide communication between uh, our organism and outer environment. They provide communication. Reception. Uh, there are uh, sensory types of epithelia. They provide receptory function. Uh, they provide reception. Also, absorption and excretion. Absorption uh, is the passageway of, the, of some uh, substances from outer to inner environment and excretion in opposite way. Some waste products, some uh, substances are excreted via the epithelium. And secretion. Uh, there are secretory cells inside the epithelium and they provide secretion. They uh, synthesize some substances and they excrete them from the organism to outer environment or into the bloodstream or into the ducts. Uh, so it's a secretory function. And we will talk about this function a little bit later. And uh, there are some morphological features of epithelia uh, which characterize the structure. So first one is uh, that epithelium is a barrier structure. Uh, it's a barrier tissue. It's located between two environments. It's a barrier between two environments. Here we can see epithelial cells and all substances they uh, can uh, um, get into our organism only via the epithelium. Uh, second feature, uh, the cells are arranged in a layer. All cells, uh, they uh, are closely fitting and they are tightly attached to each other. Uh, they aren't located separately uh, in somewhere in the extracellular matrix. Uh, they uh, are arranged uh, in the layer, like a stone on the street. And uh, it results in those uh, features that uh, the cells are closely fitting and they are tightly attached to each other. We can see here uh, neighboring epithelial cells and they are very closely attached to each other. They have special uh, intercellular junctions and uh, they attach those cells. And uh, uh, here we can see different cell junctions. Uh, you already know them from cytology. So they attach neighboring cells. They here provide mechanical attachment uh, and uh, it uh, results uh, in those features that uh, there is no intercellular substance. Cells are very close to each other. They are very, located very close and intercellular substance is almost absent. And another feature is that uh, cells have polarity. Each epithelial cell has uh, uh, special features of the structure. In the basal and apical poles, those cells, uh, they have uh, features of the structure. Uh, they have uh, a different distribution of the organelles. Some organelles are located in the apical pole, some in the basal pole. And uh, this feature is called polarity because different parts of the cells, they have different structure. Stratified epithelia, they have some layers and different cells of different layers they have different structure and it's also polarity of the epithelia. 
Another feature. The epithelium is located on the basement membrane. Basement membrane is the essential structure which is necessary for all epithelia and it's located under the epithelium. All cells are attached uh, to the basement membrane and it's necessary for the existence of the epithelium. Basement membrane is produced by the cells, by the epithelial cells and by the cells of the connective tissue. And loose connective tissue always follows the epithelium and it always underlies the epithelium. Also another feature is that epithelium has not blood vessels. Blood vessels are absent inside the epithelium, but blood vessels they are located uh, in the underlying connective tissue. Here we can see capillary. It's the basement membrane and it's the capillary. And capillaries, they provide nutrition for the epithelium. Uh, and uh, epithelial cells, they receive nutrients via diffusion from the capillaries. And one exception of uh, this rule is uh, the um, stria vascularis of the inner ear. Here we can see epithelial cells and between them there are uh, capillaries uh, which uh, provide uh, uh, production of the endolymph on, of the inner ear. But it's the only one uh, case and it's the exception from the rule. But uh, usually uh, epithelia, they haven't uh, blood vessels uh, inside. And uh, the last feature is the high regenerative capacity. Epithelium, it replaces itself during some hours or some days. And uh, this feature provides the high speed of uh, the regeneration of epithelium. So epithelium is made of epithelial cells. Uh, epithelial cells, they uh, have some features uh, which uh, are characteristic only for them. So epithelial cells, here we can see two epithelial cells and uh, electron micrograph and uh, cells, they have a polyhedral shape. Uh, they aren't spheric or star-like. Uh, they have um, or squamous or cuboidal or columnar shape. They have uh, epical surface which has some uh, projections or some uh, additional structures. They have basal surface which is attached to the basement membrane and lateral surfaces which are attached to the neighboring cells. There are all organelles uh, and uh, they are distributed according to the pole of the cells. Cells, uh, epithelial cells, they have polarity, they have epical and basal pole and those poles, they have different specialization. Uh, here we can see electron micrograph and we can see that epithelial cell uh, has all general organelles uh, and uh, they are distributed according to the functions of this cell. Also, epithelial cell has additional structures on the epical and basal poles and lateral surfaces of this cell. On the lateral surfaces, uh, epithelial cells, they have uh, different uh, kinds of cell junctions and they attach neighboring cells to each other. On the epical poles, cells have cilia. They may have cilia or microvilli, or they may uh, have no additional structures. And on the basal poles, they have uh, basal folds, and uh, there are numerous mitochondria, usually they are present. So uh, on the epical poles, uh, epithelial cells may have cilia or microvilli. Uh, they are facultative structures. So cilia and microvilli. Uh, both of them are projections of the epical uh, pole of the cell and they contain uh, different additional structures which are components of the cytoskeleton. Cilia, they have microtubules inside and microvilli, they have actin filaments. That's why cilia, they are movable and they can uh, make active movements. Uh, uh, for example, cilia can remove uh, different particles of dust uh, in the respiratory system. Microvilli aren't active movable, but they can change their shape. And uh, their main function uh, is that uh, they increase uh, epical surface of the cells, which is necessary for absorption of different uh, nutrients or different substances. Uh, and here we can compare cilia. They have axonem, microtubules, and microvilli, they haven't microtubules, they have only actin filaments. And uh, here is the uh, scanning electron micrograph of the epithelium. We can uh, see epical surface of the epithelial cells, and some of them have uh, uh, microvilli here. There are all those cells, and uh, some cells, they have cilia on the epical surface. We can compare them. Uh, and usually epithelium, which has cilia on the epical surface, it's called ciliated epithelium. 
and uh, epithelium which has microvilli, uh, it's uh, epithelium with brush border. Those microvilli, which are on the apical surface of the epithelial cells, it's called brush border. And uh, some epithelia, they have no cilia, they have no microvilli. They have a completely smooth surface. And uh, under the basal pole, there is a basement membrane. Basement membrane is a special structure, it's a special uh, lamina, which uh, contains two layers, it's a lamina lucida and lamina densa. They are made of glycoproteins, for, uh, for example, uh, laminin, it's lamina lucida, and lamina densa is made of collagen of type 3. And uh, under the basal lamina, there is a reticular lamina. It's, uh, it contains reticular fibers of the underlying connective tissue. Some components are produced by epithelial cells. Some of them are produced by the cells of underlying connective tissue. It's the uh, basement membrane. It's the essential structure of all epithelia. Uh, and uh, epithelial cells are attached to the basement membrane using special uh, kind of cell junctions. It's a hemidesmosome. Here we can see hemidesmosome, and it provides the attachment of the epithelial cell to the basement membrane. It uh, has a special structure which um, provides uh, attachment. There are proteins which are called integrins, uh, and uh, uh, components of the cytoskeleton, intermediate filaments such as keratin, are uh, attached to this uh, hemidesmosome. Uh, and here we can see electron micrograph of uh, basement membrane, and uh, there are keratin filaments, they are attached to the hemidesmosome, and a hemidesmosome is attached to the uh, lamina lucida of the uh, basement membrane, it's the lamina lucida and lamina densa. They are two layers of the basement membrane. And here also we can see uh, basement membrane or basal lamina. It's the cell and it's the hemidesmosome, special structures which are necessary to attach cells uh, to the basement membrane. And now we are going to the classification of epithelia. We usually divide epithelia into two groups, covering and lining and glandular type of epithelia. Covering and lining epithelia covers uh, uh, surfaces of the body and lines cavities of the body. And glandular type of epithelium, uh, it's present in the glands. And in some textbooks you can find a third type of epithelium, uh, it's the sensory type. And we will uh, study this type in the topic sensory systems. Uh, so, covering and lining epithelium. Covering epithelium, it covers the surfaces of the body. For example, epidermis of the skin, outer layer of the skin, and lining epithelium, it lines the cavities, for example, epithelium of the gastrointestinal tract, here we can see it. They have common features of the structure, that's why they are common type of epithelium. And now we will talk about this type. So, covering and lining epithelium, it has shape of the lamina, and uh, it may have different number of layers of the cells. According to this feature, covering and lining epithelium, we divide into the simple epithelium, which has only one layer, and stratified epithelium. Simple epithelium has only one layer, and all cells, all epithelial cells, are located on the basement membrane. They have attachment to the basement membrane. Stratified epithelium has two and more layers, and only basal layer, the deepest layer, uh, has attachment to the basement membrane. Only those cells are attached to the basement membrane. This type of epithelium is called stratified because it has some layers, two and more. And sometimes stratified epithelium is called compound epithelium. So here we can uh, see a simple epithelium, there is only one layer of the epithelial cells, and stratified epithelium. There are numerous layers of the epithelial cells. It's a basal layer, only those cells, they have attachment to the basement membrane, and in other cells are attached to the underlying cells, but not to the basement membrane. It's the main difference between simple and stratified epithelium. It's the first classification, uh, it's the basic classification of epithelium, simple and stratified epithelium. And uh, uh, those epithelia, they have different features of the polarity. For example, simple epithelium, they, it has polarity of the cells, different parts of the cells, they have different features and di different distribution of the organelles. Stratified epithelium, it has polarity of the cell layers, uh, we can see here that uh, layers uh, of the cells, uh, they have different structure. 
cells in different layers, they are different, and it's the polarity of stratified epithelium. And another classification takes into account shape of the cells. So epithelial cells may be squamous, and epithelium, this type of epithelium is called squamous. Some cells may be cuboidal, and epithelium is cuboidal, and some cells may be columnar. It's a columnar type of epithelium. So according to the shape of cells, epithelium is squamous, cuboidal, and columnar. It's another classification. Uh, and here we can see squamous epithelium its view from upper uh, side. Uh, it's a cuboidal epithelium and it's a columnar epithelium. We can compare our shape of the cells. Those cells are flat, those cells are cuboidal in shape, and uh, those cells are columnar in shape. If we classify a simple epithelium according to the shape of cells, we can see them, uh, for example, it's a uh, columnar type. In the stratified epithelium, we can see that uh, all cells of different layers are different. And this type of epithelium we can call columnar, we can call cuboidal or squamous because different cells are different. But we classify stratified epithelium according to the epical layer of the cell, to the superficial layer of the cells. So superficial cells of this uh, epithelium are squamous. That's why we classify stratified epithelium, this case, uh, as squamous type. Uh, because we take into account, in this case, only superficial cells. So we have simple and stratified epithelia, two kinds, and uh, we have squamous, cuboidal, and columnar. And it results in six basic types of epithelia. Simple squamous, stratified squamous, simple cuboidal and stratified cuboidal, simple columnar and stratified columnar. It's very easy classification, six types, and if you remember uh, shape of the cells and simple and stratified epithelium, you can list six basic types of epithelia. But there are uh, two additional types of epithelia, and uh, they here have uh, own features of the classification. So, for example, this type. It's like stratified epithelium because there are some rows of the cells, uh, there are some rows of the nuclei. Uh, but this type uh, isn't stratified because all cells are attached to the basement membrane. You can see here that all cells, they are located on the different levels and all cells are different, but all of them, they have connection to the basement membrane. And uh, it's a special type of epithelium. It's called pseudostratified because it's alike stratified, but it's not the stratified epithelium. It's pseudostratified. Literally, it's a simple epithelium because all cells have attachment to the basement membrane. That's why we call this type of epithelium pseudostratified or simple columnar pseudostratified epithelium. Uh, and also, there is another type of epithelium. It's a stratified epithelium because there are some layers of the cells, but all cells of all layers, they have a different shape. And uh, we can see uh, cells uh, are cuboidal or even columnar, but here the cells are squamous. This type of epithelium, it can change the shape of the cells according to the condition of the organ. This type of epithelium may be relaxed or stretched. And when this uh, epithelium is stretched, epical cells are squamous and in, in the relaxed condition, cells are cuboidal or even columnar in shape. That's why this type of epithelium has been called transitional. Transitional because this epithelium transits from one condition to another. It can change the shape of the cells. That's why this type of epithelium is transitional. Uh, and transitional epithelium is type of stratified epithelium. So we have eight basic types of epithelium. Simple squamous, simple cuboidal, simple columnar, Pseudostratified epithelium, there are kinds of simple epithelia, and stratified squamous, stratified cuboidal, stratified columnar, and transitional epithelium, there are kinds of stratified epithelium. And now let's talk about uh, different uh, kinds of the epithelia. We can see that uh, all types of epithelia are very different. Uh, they have common features, but uh, they may be very different in different organs. And uh, they are Structure is caused by the function of those epithelia. When epithelium has one function, those function has influence on the structure of the epithelium. So we start from simple squamous epithelium. Simple squamous epithelium it has one layer of the flat cells. 
So cells are flat and they are arranged into one layer and all cells are located on the basement membrane. Here we can see uh, simple squamous cells of capillary. Here we can see a uh, drawing of histological slide. Uh, there are cells of simple squamous epithelium in the mesothelium, special type of epithelium. And we can see uh, cell boundaries between the cells. Uh, we can see cytoplasm and nuclei. It's view from upper side. And here we can see the same histological uh, slide, but it's a microphotograph. It's not the drawing, it's a uh, microphotograph. And uh, here we can see cells, cell boundaries, nuclei, cytoplasm. Here on the higher magnification we can see those cells. So cells they have squamous shape and that's why this type of epithelium is called simple squamous. Where this type of epithelium is located? The main uh, place of location is the serous membranes. We have different serous membranes. They are pleura, pericardium and peritoneum. All those membranes they are covered with simple squamous epithelium and in those places this type of epithelium uh, is called mesocilium. Mesocilium is special name for simple squamous epithelium of serous membranes. So pleura, pericardium and peritoneum they have mesocilium. Also, this type of epithelium is present in blood vessels. It lines the blood vessels and uh, also it lines the cavity of the heart. Here we can see the appearance of those type of epithelium. And uh, this type of epithelium is called endothelium. It's a special name of the simple squamous epithelium of the blood vessels. And also, simple squamous epithelium may be present uh, not only in the capillaries, it's present also in the alveoli of lungs. Here we can see alveolus of lung and uh, there is a simple uh, squamous epithelium. And uh, also it's present in the smallest excretory ducts of some glands. So there are main places of uh, location of simple squamous epithelium, but they aren't the only places of uh, the location. And uh, next type is the simple cuboidal epithelium. Simple cuboidal epithelium it contains cuboidal cells, uh, which are in arranged into one layer, only one layer, and all cells are located on the basement membrane. It may have a shape of the layer or sometimes the shape of the ducts. It's present in some uh, tubules and ducts. Uh, and here we can see a drawing of, of histological slide. There are tubules of kidneys. So there are cells, epithelial cells, uh, which are located on the basement membrane. It's the renal tubule, and it's also renal tubule. They are uh, surrounded uh, by uh, connective tissue. It's a lumen of the tubule. And there are cells, epithelial cells, uh, which have two poles, basal and apical pole. And we can see that they have cuboidal shape. And uh, it's a microphotograph of the same slide. We can see that cells, they have cuboidal shape, those renal tubules, the lumens, and between them there is a connective tissue. This type of epithelium, uh, as you already know, is present in kidneys. Also, it's present in the excretory ducts of some glands, for example, it's salivary gland, and it's the excretory duct. In thyroid gland, follicles of thyroid glands are made of simple cuboidal epithelium. Uh, also, it's present in kidneys. It's also a place uh, of the location of simple cuboidal epithelium. And next type of simple epithelia is simple columnar epithelium. It has uh, columnar cells. You can see them. Uh, they have uh, columnar shape. And all cells are, are attached to the basement membrane. You can see this type. And it's a microphotograph of uh, those cells. And in the drawing of histological slide, it's also renal tubules, but in this place they have simple columnar epithelium, because cells they have columnar shape, not cuboidal, but columnar. It's a lumen of the renal tubule, it's a basement membrane, it's surrounding connective tissue, it's a lumen, and there are cells, epithelial cells of simple columnar epithelium. And it's a microphotograph of the same slide, but it's a microphotograph, not drawing. Uh, there are cells, epithelial cells, and it's a basement membrane, and surrounding connective tissue. It's a lumen of those renal tubules. 
Uh, and it's also simple columnar epithelium. There are columnar cells. And uh, in this case, they have brush border. And uh, some cells, they haven't brush border. They may be ciliated. So simple columnar epithelium may be ciliated or epithelium with brush border. Or it uh, may have no additional structure, for example, in this case. So this type of epithelium is present in kidneys. It's also present in the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, it's present, uh, it lines the uh, cavity of the stomach, uh, of the uh, intestines. Uh, also, it's present in the uterus and fallopian tubes. Uh, they are main places of the location of the simple columnar epithelium. So the next type uh, is the pseudostratified epithelium. It's uh, also simple epithelium. It's uh, like uh, uh, stratified epithelium, especially under the microscope. But uh, clearly, uh, this type of epithelium is simple because all cells, they have attachment to the basement membrane. All cells are located on the basement membrane. That's why uh, uh, exactly this type of epithelium is simple. And uh, according to the shape of cells, uh, this type of epithelium has been called pseudostratified because it's a like stratified epithelium, because there are some rows of uh, the cells uh, and uh, it has appearance of stratified epithelium. Uh, here we can see a drawing of the histological slide and there are different cells of pseudostratified columnar epithelium. There are ciliated cells, which have cilia on the apical surface. There are goblet cells, which produce mucus. There are uh, basal cells, which provide regeneration. And between them may be present uh, endocrine cells, which uh, provide secretion of uh, some hormones. There are basic types of the cells of the pseudostratified epithelium. Uh, we can see here basement membrane and uh, uh, underlying connective tissue. And we can see that uh, uh, there are columnar cells with cilia. And those cilia, they are necessary to remove different dust particles from the face of epithelium. And different cells, they, differ, they have different shape. And uh, according to this feature, uh, there are some rows of nuclei of this type of epithelium. And um, uh, it results in the appearance of the pseudostratified epithelium is like uh, appearance of the stratified epithelium, but uh, it's simple. And it's a microphotograph of the pseudostratified epithelium with the goblet cells, the ciliated cells and basal cells near the basement membrane. And there are some rows of nuclei of epithelial cells. And here we also can see a pseudostratified epithelium, but it's a uh, different uh, staining. Uh, it's another staining. And also there are goblet cells, ciliated cells with cilia on the apical fold, and there are basal cells near the basement membrane, and uh, between them may be present uh, endocrine cells, uh, which produce hormones. This type of epithelium is mainly present in the respiratory system. It lines the cavity of nose, uh, larynx, trachea, bronchi, uh, some uh, bronchioles. Uh, they are lined by this type of epithelium. Also, it lines the cavity of middle ear, uh, auditory tube. And uh, uh, in those places, uh, this uh, epithelium is called respiratory type of epithelium because it's mainly present in the respiratory system. Uh, but uh, also it may be present in some places of male uh, reproductive system. Now we are going to stratified epithelia. Stratified epithelia, they have uh, two and more layers of the cells. And only basal layer, uh, basal cells are attached to the basement membrane. So it's a basal layer of stratified epithelium. Also, there may be present intermediate layer and superficial layer. If uh, this epithelium has only two layers, there are only basal and superficial layer. If there are three and more layers, there is uh, an intermediate layer. So if you remember the classification of epithelia, stratified epithelium may be squamous, may be cuboidal, may be columnar or transitional type. We start from cuboidal and columnar type of epithelium because they uh, have uh, common features of the structure. So stratified cuboidal and columnar epithelia, here we can see both of them is cuboidal and columnar type. They uh, have uh, common features of the structure and uh, uh, common places of their localization. For example, it's the stratified cuboidal epithelium. We can see two layers of the cells and those cells are cuboidal in shape. Uh, and here also we can see excretory duct of the gland and uh, it's uh, aligned with stratified cuboidal epithelium. 
and it's certified uh, columnar epithelium. We can see uh, cells, and uh, those cells are tall and uh, thin, and uh, it's certified columnar epithelium. And here we can see duct of the gland, which is lined with certified uh, columnar epithelium. Places of their location are almost uh, the same. Certified cuboidal and columnar epithelia are present in the excretory uh, ducts of the glands, those glands uh, which have uh, ectodermal origin, such as salivary glands, it's the duct of salivary gland, and it's certified uh, cuboidal epithelium. And uh, sweet glands, also those glands, they have ectodermal origin. Also memory glands, uh, some excretory ducts of the memory glands, uh, they are lined with stratified uh, cuboidal or sometimes columnar epithelium. And uh, it's a stratified columnar epithelium. It's alike cuboidal and it has the same places of localization almost the same. And here we can see two layers of the cells, but basal layer is cuboidal, so cells are cuboidal, and superficial cells are columnar, and we classify this type of epithelium as columnar, because superficial cells are columnar. And uh, next type of epithelium is squamous epithelium, certified squamous epithelium. We can see that this type of epithelium has uh, some layers of cells, usually numerous layers of the cells, and uh, basal cells, only basal cells are located on the basement membrane, and superficial cells are squamous in shape. And between them there are different cells with different uh, shape, they are polyhedral in shape, uh, oval, and uh, there are different types. Uh, they are transitional type between cuboidal or columnar basal cells and uh, squamous superficial cells. Cells usually are moving from the deepest basal layer to the superficial layer. Basal layer, it provides regeneration. Here cells have uh, multiple mitotic uh, divisions and uh, uh, following generations of the cells are moving upper and upper to the superficial layer. And uh, it provides renewal of the uh, epithelium. Uh, young cells replace old cells uh, and uh, old and dying cells, so they have disquamation, uh, they are removed from the surface of the epithelium. Uh, and stratified squamous epithelium has two types, two main types. It's non-keratinized epithelium and keratinized epithelium. The main difference between them is uh, presence of additional keratin layer of the epithelium on the surface of this type of epithelium. In non-keratinized squamous epithelium, stratified squamous epithelium, superficial cells are squamous in shape and they are alive. Here we can see squamous cells, but they are alive. And, uh, and in the keratinized epithelium, cells, uh, the cytoplasm, is replaced by special protein keratin. It replaces all organelles, it replaces the nucleus, and cells die. And uh, they um, together uh, are present in the keratin layer. It's a special layer which contains dead cells. And those dead cells, they protect underlying alive cells. It's necessary, for example, for body coverings. Uh, it's present uh, in the epidermis of the skin. It protects skin from damage because alive cells, they may uh, have injury by uh, the influence of the external environment. And keratin layer, it protects the underlying cells from the injury of uh, outer environment. So there are non-keratinized and keratinized epithelia. They are alike each other, but there are some differences. So we begin from non-keratinized epithelium. So non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, we can see this type of epithelium. It has usually has three layers, basal layer, intermediate and surface layer. Basal layer contains basal cells, which are located uh, on the basement membrane. And those cells are uh, cuboidal or columnar in shape. They have multiple mitotic divisions, and after those divisions, cells are moving into the intermediate layer. And in the intermediate layer, they have some modifications, they produce some substances uh, which are necessary for their life. And they are moving to the upper layers of the epithelium. And in the surface layer, they become to be squamous, and those squamous cells, they protect the epithelium from damage. And when those cells become to be old, they die, and there is an disclamation of the cells from the surface of epithelium. 
It's a life cycle of the cells of the non-carotenized stratified squamous epithelium. Uh, they are moving from the basal layer to the superficial layer. And superficial cells in this case are alive. Here we can see histological uh, slide. It's a non-carotenized stratified squamous epithelium. It's a basal layer. It's located on the basement membrane. It's the intermediate layer. It usually contains polyhedral cells with polyhedral shape. And superficial layer, it has numerous layers of the squamous cells. It's uh, also drawing of the histological slide. It's non carotenized stratified squamous epithelium. It's a basal layer, intermediate layer, and squamous cells of superficial layer. Uh, this type of epithelium is usually present in the oral cavity. For example, here, this type of epithelium is characteristic for oral cavity. Also, it uh, is present uh, on the tan papilla. It's the tan papilla and uh, this type of epithelium in the esophagus, in the pharynx, and also this type of epithelium is present in the anus and the vagina. And here we can see a cervix of uh, uterus, and it's a uh, non carotenized stratified uh, squamous epithelium of the vaginal portion of the cervix of uh, uterus. And also this type of epithelium is present uh, on the cornea, it covers the cornea of eye. It's also non-carotenized stratified squamous epithelium. And uh, another type of uh, this type of epithelium is carotenized epithelium. It's like non-carotenized, but uh, it has uh, additional keratin layer. Here we can see carotenized stratified squamous epithelium with additional keratin layer. Uh, and uh, uh, usually this type of epithelium is present uh, on the skin. We can compare keratinized and non-keratinized epithelium. Keratinized has additional keratin layer. Those cells have died and they are replaced by the keratin. The cytoplasm, nucleus and uh, in other parts, they are replaced by the keratin. And uh, uh, those keratin layer uh, is necessary to protect the uh, surface uh, of the skin. In the non-keratinized epithelium, this layer is absent. All those cells which uh, are superficial, they are alive. And here we can see a, a histological slide. It's the epidermis, the outer layer of the skin, and it's the stratified squamous keratinized epithelium. It's a basal layer, intermediate layer, and there are some another layers. We'll talk about them later. And it's the keratin layer. You can see here keratin layer which protects the skin from damage. And here we can see different cells of different layers of this type of epithelium and superficial layer. Uh, they change their shape and they become to be squamous and later they are replaced with keratin and uh, they die. Here we can see still alive cells and they are replaced with keratin and they die and uh, um, they cover the epithelium, uh, outer side of the epithelium. And here we can see keratin squamous cells, keratinized cells. Uh, it's the superficial layer of the epidermis. It's uh, certified squamous keratinized epithelium. And we can see uh, cells, uh, their derivates, which uh, are replaced with keratin. They protect the skin from damage. And this type of epithelium has uh, five layers. Uh, they have own names. We will study this type of epithelium in the topic skin, uh, but now uh, we will talk about layers. So the deepest layer, the basal layer, is called also stratum basale. It's the deepest layer of the stratified squamous keratinized epithelium. Next layer is the stratum spinosum. It has uh, polyhedral cells with polyhedral uh, shape. They are attached to each other with desmosomes, and uh, those projections of the cells, uh, they have given the name spinosum. Next uh, layer is the stratum granulosum. Those cells, they contain granules. There are inclusions of uh, keratohyaline, its progenitor of the keratin, and uh, cytoplasm is particularly replaced uh, by the keratin. Next layer is stratum lucidum. Some of those cells are still alive, some of them are already dead, and uh, the process of uh, replacing of the cytoplasm by keratin is uh, going here. And stratum corneum contains only dead cells, which are completely replaced by the keratin, and stratum corneum, or keratin layer, it protects another layers, which are located under this layer. Uh, so there are stratum basale, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum, and stratum corneum. 
there are five layers of the keratinized stratified squamous epithelium or uh, layers of the epidermis, outer layer of the skin. And uh, also sometimes keratinized epithelium may be present in another part of the uh, organism. For example, uh, there are uh, papilla of the tongue, there are filiform papilla, and uh, they have a keratin layer which protects them and uh, provides uh, mechanical functions of those papilla. And uh, sometimes uh, non-keratinized epithelium, certified non-keratinized squamous epithelium, may have uh, keratinization in some places. Uh, it's called leukoplakia. Uh, for example, uh, it's the vaginal portion of the neck of the uterus. There are places of leukoplakia where uh, epithelium, non-keratinized epithelium becomes to be keratinized. And there are gums, there are teeth, and there are gums. And uh, also there are regions, white regions, where non-keratinized epithelium is replaced by keratinized epithelium. It's a pathological condition because uh, it may uh, cause, uh, in future, it may cause the cancer formation. So it's a, a precancer disease. And uh, next type of epithelium is transitional epithelium. Transitional epithelium, as you already know, is called because it can transit from one condition to another and uh, it can change the shape of the cells. And uh, those cells, they are different in different conditions of the epithelium. So this epithelium uh, is present in the urinary system. It lines the cavity of the urinary bladder, present in urethra, in the ureters. Uh, uh, it also lines the pelvis of kidney. And uh, this type of epithelium uh, is called also urocilium because it's present in the urinary system. And uh, those location causes the features of this epithelium. For example, here it's transitional epithelium. It lines the cavity of urinary bladder. And urinary blood may be empty, but sometimes it's filled with urine. When urinary blood is filled with urine, wall of the urinary blood is stretched. And uh, when it's empty, wall is relaxed. And uh, all tissues of the urinary blood, of the wall of urinary blood, are stretched or relaxed. And according to this uh, feature, uh, epithelium can change its shape. For example, in the relaxed condition, cells of superficial layer, they are cuboidal in shape. And in the stretched condition, cells become to be squamous. And here we can see a relaxed condition and stretched condition. We can compare how this type of epithelium changes its shape. And also number of layers is changed because cells, they change their location and they are distributed in another way because of stretching of the wall of the organ. Usually uh, this type of epithelium has three layers. It's the basal layer, intermediate layer and superficial layer. Only cells of superficial layer, they are mainly change their shape. Uh, cells of intermediate and basal layer, they change their distribution during the stretching of the organ. Uh, so cells uh, of superficial layer, they uh, may change their shape from columnar, uh, from oval shape to squamous when organ is stretched. And here we can see transitional epithelium. Here we can see superficial cells. And uh, superficial cells uh, during stretching, they change their shape to squamous. And another layers, uh, cells of another layers, they change their distribution and uh, number of layers during stretching is decreased. And here we can see micrograph of the uh, transitional epithelium. There are superficial cells. They have specific shape and uh, there are intermediate cells and basal layer. Basal layer usually provides the regeneration as in another types of uh, stratified epithelia. It's intermediate uh, layer and superficial layer of the transitional epithelium. Here we can see ureter and uh, it's the mucosa of ureter and it's the transitional epithelium and it's the drawing of histological site of urinary bladder and it's also lined with transitional epithelium. There are folds of mucosa of urinary bladder and uh, those folds are covered with transitional epithelium. So we have discussed all types of uh, covering and lining epithelia. Uh, there are six uh, basic types, uh, simple squamous, simple cuboidal, simple columnar, stratified squamous, stratified cuboidal, stratified columnar, and additional special types, pseudo-stratified, 
which belongs to simple epithelia and transitional, which is kind of stratified epithelia. Uh, there were covering and lining epithelia, which covers the surfaces of the body and line the cavities. And also there is a glandular type of epithelia, uh, and uh, those type of epithelium is present in the gland. So now we are going to the glandular type of epithelia and to the glands. All glands are made of epithelial tissue, and all glands they uh, contain epithelial cells. So they have features which are characteristic for all types of epithelia, uh, including covering and lining. They are made of cells, cells are closely attached to each other, they have basement membrane, and they have own features of those cells. So cells of uh, glands, they have ability for secretion. They provide secretion. Secretion is a process of production of some uh, uh, products, uh, some substances, which are uh, produced by the cell and re released from the cell to inner or outer environment. Here we can see secretory cycle of the cell. Uh, cell produces different substances, and those substances in the secretory vesicles are released from the cell. And here we can see a secretory cell. Uh, some of secretory products are still in the cell. They are waiting for release. And when cell uh, receives some signals from outer environment, it releases those substances uh, to the bloodstream, for example, endocrine cells, or into the duct uh, as exocrine cells. So there are different secretion mechanisms. Uh, the ways how those uh, secretory products, those substances, may be released from the cell. There are merocrine secretion, epocrine secretion, and holocrine secretion. Merocrine secretion is the secretion via exocytosis. Uh, in this way, cell produces something. Uh, there are secretory vesicles, which are separated from the Golgi apparatus, and those secretory vesicles, they carry the secretory products and uh, release them via exocytosis. Cells don't have damage. Cells aren't damaged. Uh, and uh, it's the most common type of uh, secretion. Another type is the epocrine type of secretion. So secretory products are accumulated in the apex of the cell and in the apical pole. And uh, those apical pole is separated from the cell. And uh, this type of secretion is characteristic for the mammary glands. Uh, milk is produced by this way. And uh, some types of the sweet glands. There are mirocrine and epocrine sweet glands. And some of them have mirocrine type of secretion, and some of them they have epocrine type of secretion. And the third type is the holocrine type of secretion. Secretory cells are completely filled with secretory product. Uh, it replaces the cytoplasm, it replaces the nucleus, and uh, uh, cell, when it is uh, completely filled with secretory product, uh, there is a rupture of the cell membrane. And secretory product is released from the cell to the outer environment. This type of secretion is characteristic for sebaceous glands, glands of the skin which produce sebum. So, uh, holocrine type of secretion is characteristic for sebaceous glands. Epocrine is characteristic for memory glands and some types of sweet glands. And all other glands, they have mirocrine type uh, of secretion. And uh, also there are different types of uh, glands, there are different classifications of glands, and now we will talk about classifications. Gland is a structure which uh, provides secretion. This structure may contain only one cell, for example here, or it uh, may contain some cells, or some glands are distinct organs. According to the number of cells, we divide glands into the unicellular type of glands, which contain only one cell, and uh, multicellular glands, which contain uh, some cells, including organs which are the glands, for example, pancreas, uh, liver, and others. So there are unicellular glands and multicellular glands, according to the number of cells. And uh, also those glands may be present in different parts of the epithelium. Some secretory uh, cells are present between the cells of covering and lining epithelium. Those type of uh, gland is called endoepithelial type of gland. And some glands are present outside the epithelium. They are called exoepithelial glands. So endoepithelial glands are present in the covering and lining epithelium between covering cells. 
there are uh, cells of um, the skin of axolotl, uh, it's animal uh, like the frog. Epidermis of those animals, it has uh, uh, keratinocytes, and between them there are Leydig cells. Don't confuse them with Leydig cells of the testes, of human testes. Uh, uh, there are different types of cells, but uh, they are named by one uh, scientist. And what they are very different cells. Uh, so latex cells of skin of axolotl, they produce mucus, which covers the skin of those animals. And they are endoepithelial cells, uh, endoepithelial glands, which uh, are located inside the covering and lining epithelium. But some glands, usually they are present outside the covering and lining epithelium. They are called exoepithelial glands. And uh, another classification of glands uh, takes into account way of secretion. According to this feature, all glands are classified also into groups exocrine and endocrine glands. Exocrine and endocrine glands. What is the difference? Exo, it means outer. They produce some substances and release it into the cavities, into the lumen of uh, some organs or into the surface of our body. There are exocrine glands, for example, glands of the stomach or glands of the skin. They have secretory portion and they have excretory duct, which provides the secretion. And endocrine glands, they provide secretion into the bloodstream. They have an excretory duct. They have only secretory portion. And those portion is made of secretory cells. And they produce some hormones, which are released directly into the bloodstream, not into the cavities, not into the ducts. They produce uh, those substances and release them without excretory duct. It's the main difference between exocrine and endocrine glands. And also uh, here we can see exocrine gland, it has secretory unit or end portion or uh, secretory portion of the gland and excretory duct, which provides secretion of some substances. And Endocrine gland, it has only a secretory unit and uh, it releases some substances into the bloodstream, but it hasn't uh, excretory duct. It doesn't uh, need excretory duct. And uh, usually exocrine glands, they release some substances via the apical pole of the cell because they need uh, to release it into the uh, secretory duct. And endocrine cells, they release those substances via the basal pole because they release them into the bloodstream, into the capillaries, which are located near those uh, uh, secretory units of the endocrine glands. And here we can see exocrine gland in the salivary gland and uh, it has excretory ducts between secretory portions. There are secretory portions and excretory ducts. And it's the endocrine gland, it's the thyroid gland. It has follicles, but excretory ducts are absent. Those follicles, cells of the follicles, they release their secretory products in, uh, directly into the bloodstream, into the capillaries. And uh, some of glands uh, are mixed. Uh, for example, a pancreas. It has uh, endocrine part, which releases some substances directly into the bloodstream, and exocrine part. There are acini uh, and acinar cells, which produce some substances uh, into the excretory ducts. It's the exocrine part of the pancreas. And uh, also uh, exocrine and endocrine glands, they are cells, they have uh, different ways uh, for excretion of secretory products. For example, it's the exocrine cell, cell of exocrine gland, it releases those products via the apical pole. And it's the endocrine cell, uh, and uh, this cell has granules of hormones which are located in the basal pole, and it releases those hormones via the basal pole. And uh, endocrine glands, we will discuss in the topic endocrine system. We will have a lesson on endocrine system. And now we will talk about uh, features of exocrine glands. So here we can see different exocrine glands. All those glands, they have two basic parts. It's the secretory unit or secretory portion or end unit, end portion. It provides secretion. It uh, contains the secretory cells which produce some substances and they release them into the middle of the secretory unit. And those substances are released via the excretory duct. 
with the duct, special duct, uh, those cells of duct, they haven't ability for the secretion. Usually they haven't. They provide uh, uh, excretion, they provide release of those substances because they are making special tubules which connect gland to the superficial covering or lining epithelium. And we can see that those secretory units, they may be different. And uh, excretory ducts also may be different. And taking into account those features, there are some classifications uh, of exocrine glands. Uh, so the first classification takes it into account shape of the secretory unit. And uh, we can see that secretory unit may be different. It may be uh, tubular in shape and it may be spheric in shape, round. So according to this feature, we divide exocrine glands into the tubular and alveolar or acinar. Tubular glands, they have shape of tubule. Their secretory duct, uh, uh, their secretory portion has shape of tubule. And alveolar or acinar glands, uh, they have round shape, spheric. And alveolar glands, they have cavity inside of the secretory portion and acinar, they haven't cavity. It's the main division of the gland. In some uh, textbooks, you can find that there are only tubular and alveolar glands. In some textbooks, there are three kinds, tubular, alveolar, and acinar. But alveolar and acinar glands, both of them, they have spheric uh, secretory portion. And here we can see tubular and piece, acinar and alveolar and piece. They are spheric in shape, round in shape, but acinar, it uh, almost uh, doesn't have cavity, and alveolar gland uh, and piece, it has cavity inside. Uh, but usually they are classified as one type. And uh, uh, here we can see tubular glands, there are glands of uterus, and acinar glands, it's the uh, parotid gland. And also there are tubular glands, alveolar glands, and some glands, they have uh, both types of secretory units, uh, both tubular and alveolar glands. Uh, so uh, those type, so type is tubular alveolar type of glands. It has both types of secretory portions. You can see here tubular and alveolar secretory units. Another classification takes into account branching of secretory units. Here we can see secretory units and ducts, and those secretory units may be not branched and branched. They may be divided into secondary secretory units. According to this uh, feature, we divide glands into non-branched and into the branched glands. So non-branched glands, they have simple shape of the secretory units and branched uh, glands, they have secretory units which are divided into the secondary secretory units. So uh, this classification takes into account branching of secretory units. First classification takes into account shape of secretory units. This takes into account branching of secretory units. Uh, and here we can see non-branched and branched glands, they have branched uh, secretory units. The glands may be in the same time tubular and alveolar and non-branched and branched. Here we can see uh, tubular, non-branched, alveolar non-branched, tubular branched, and alveolar branched glands. And also uh, there is another classification, third classification, basic classification uh, of the glands according to the branching of the excretory duct. We already know that uh, secretory unit may be branched or unbranched, but excretory duct may be branched also. Uh, some glands, they have only one excretory duct, and they are called simple glands. They have only one duct. And some glands, they have some ducts. They have branched system of the ducts. And those glands are called compound. They have some excretory ducts. And here we can see simple glands because each gland has one duct, one excretory duct. And this gland is compound because uh, excretory duct is branched, is, it's divided into some branches. So all those glands, which we have been talking before, they are simple. The first is tubular, unbranched, simple, uh, because tubular, according to the shape of the secretory portion, unbranched, because secretory portion isn't divided into the branches, and it's a simple because there is only one excretory duct. The second one is alveolar, unbranched, simple gland. 
So we use three classifications. Next one is the tubular branched simple branched because uh, there are some branches of the uh, secretory portion, but it's a simple gland because it has only one excretory duct. And uh, this one is alveolar branched simple gland because uh, it has alveolar shape of secretory units. They are branched. That's why it's branched, but it's a simple. And this one, uh, it's compound gland. It's tubular alveolar gland because there are tubules and uh, secretory units with alveolar shape. That's why it's tubular alveolar gland. It's branched because those uh, uh, secretory units are divided into the secondary and compound. So it's the most complex structure of the uh, exocrine gland. And here we can see different types of glands. For example, it's a simple tubular gland because um, secretory unit has tubular shape and it has uh, only one duct, that's why it's simple, and it's also unbranched, because secretory portion isn't branched. Don't confuse uh, branched and unbranched glands with simple and compound. Simple and compound, it's about uh, branching of the duct, and uh, branched and uh, unbranched, it's about branching of the secretory unit. Try to remember this feature. This one, it's simple branched tubular. Tubular because secretory units, uh, they have tubular shape. It's branched because uh, they have secretary, uh, secondary divisions. And it's simple because there is only one excretory duct without any branching. This one, it's tubular. And there is a special name for those type of gland. It's coiled type of gland. Because those shape of gland is characteristic, for example, for uh, sweet glands of skin. Uh, and uh, also it's simple tubular unbranched gland. Next one, simple acinar. Acinar or alveolar type because uh, it is uh, round uh, in shape. Uh, simple uh, because only one duct and it's also unbranched because this secretary unit hasn't any secondary divisions. This one is simple branched acinar. Simple because of uh, presence of one excretory duct. Acinar or alveolar because uh, those secretory units, they have spheric shape. It's branched because uh, secretory units, uh, they have secondary divisions. And we are going to compound glands. We can see that compound glands, they have secondary divisions of the excretory duct. Secondary, tertiary and following. Some glands, they have complex, very complex structure of the excretory duct. And they may be tubular. This gland is tubular, uh, branched because those secretory units are branched, and compound because there is a uh, branched excretory duct. This one is acinar, branched, compound because uh, of uh, shape of the uh, secretory units. Those secretory units are branched, and uh, there is a branched system of excretory ducts. And this one is tubular acinar because there are both types of uh, secretory units. And it's compound because uh, the excretory duct has complex branch structure. So uh, there are two types of epicilia, covering and lining and uh, uh, glandular type. And uh, both of those types, they have common features of their structure. And uh, there are some differences, there are some classifications. And those differences uh, are caused by features of the function. Function causes the features of the shape, because the uh, shape of all those cell structures, it corresponds to the functions which uh, are provided by those structures.